By night, our speaker, Jay Donovan, writes for TechCrunch and has been covering startups for the blog as a longtime freelancer since 2009. By day, he is Associate Director of Strategy for the creative agency Resource Amirati, an IBM company. Jay will be taking the stage today to discuss AR and VR as part of the evolution of tools and how mixed reality experiences are actually not misaligned with the human experience. Please join me in welcoming Jay to the stage. Hello. Hey, thanks a lot. Uh, my name is Jay Donovan, and I write for TechCrunch. Uh, it's one of the things I do. I do a lot of different things, right? And uh, today I'm going to share a couple of my opinions about augmented and mixed reality that I've seen out in, um, in the world that I've written about. I'm also going to refer to augmented and mixed reality as armor a lot, and that's not to be annoying. Um, it's really just to, to take it down from 13 syllables to two syllables, because we've got like 90 slides to go through in 14 minutes. Kind of like how Chips was short for California Highway Patrol, right? <laughs> but not as cool as that. So, um, but seriously, um, um, we're going to take a look at a couple of, of things that have happened here uh, in augmented and mixed reality, and I'm going to call it armor. So, but before, uh, before we do that, um, we're going to take a look at an evolution of tools, right? Because the foundation of our human tool set is really the rock. We're not going to look at a bunch of case studies about uh, this technology or that technology. We're going to look at rocks. There's been a couple of these. Uh, this motif has already been used in this uh, today in this, uh, at, at AWE. So um, the reason we're going to look at rocks is because that's the foundation of our tool set that will eventually get us to things like augmented and mixed reality, because they will let us do things no one else can do, see things no one else can see, like they say in Big Trouble in Little China. Um, and people, I often hear people, naysayers, that say, you know, we don't really need augmented or mixed reality. These are solutions looking for a problem. Um, and you could say, OK, that, that's true. We don't really need plows. Um, we don't really need CAT scans or sewing machines. Um, but we make these things, right? We make tools, and that's what we do, and that's what I'm going to talk about. And over time, our tools evolve, right? Uh, the waxer for paste up is what you used to use for layout. Um, now that's, that's been replaced by Photoshop, and uh, that the tools evolve and they get better. And ultimately, as we evolve tools as humans, be they become digital tools, fancy digital tools, like augmented and mixed reality, or armor. And unless there's a zombie apocalypse, um, they're going to serve us really, really well, right? So, but let's not think about the zombie apocalypse right now. Let's look at a couple of tool evolutions, right? Because sometimes we have a really great idea, and we modify it over time, and we make tools more uh, better, more accurate, um, more powerful, smaller, faster. Sometimes we really screw it up, right? Other times, we take tools. And we have a really great idea, and I think we really hit, it, hit the nail on the head, right? We make it better and better, and we come up with something beautiful, like a, like a handheld laser cutter. Other times, we have the very, very best intentions. Um, but maybe somewhere along the line, we miss part of the bigger picture, right? But the bottom line is that it doesn't matter. It can't be stopped. Philosophically, I think we make tools, and that's just what we do, and we're going to keep making them. So tools are one of the ways that we're different from other species on Earth. Another way we're different is our eyesight, right? We see the world differently than a lot of different animals. Um, and over the years, we've made some pretty sweet tools in that arena as well, so that we can see the world more closely, further away, way far away, um, better and better. But the, the biggest way that we're different from other species is that we have imagination. And when you mix a love of tools, with this unique visual capability that we have, and also imagination, what comes out of that is armor. A lot of things come out of that, right? We know that. But one of the things is augmented and mixed reality. So now, it's not just some beautiful, magical wonderland of technology either, right? There, there, are, uh, there are problems along the way. There's this perception of misuse, right? Real or imagined. And, and really, until now, until this time, when, when we were all together and looking at something in the world, we all pretty much saw the same thing, right? We, we were looking at the same objects. 
But in a mixed or, or uh, in an armor world, you know, that's not, that's not necessarily true, right? And, and there can be these perceptions of misuse where we don't know what the motivations of everybody are. This is documented out there, right? Um, and can this misuse, this potential for misuse, be reconciled? It can't. I used to think that when we all had the same tools, or the, the ability to have them if we wanted them, that this, this problem we have about who's seeing what and how we're interacting could be reconciled, but it can't. Um, the problem is not the tools, the problem is people, right? And there are always going to be people that have, uh, have problems with using technology, um, like the, like the games, gaming the girl scenario in, in the movie site. Um, but it's also not all bad, right? There, there's still some upside here, right? It's not just a, a, a all misuse. And this is where strategy becomes really, really important, I think. Um, when we're making tools, we really need to make sure that people are kept at the, at the center of what it is you're trying to do. Um, it's very tempting to have this cool technology but, that does something, but if it doesn't serve the needs of people, then, then it really is something that can divide people from each other, right? The, uh, the intentions are not focused on people, and people need to do things. Tools and technology are not strategy in of themselves. They help a strategy come to life. All right, so what have we covered up to this point? We make tools. Sometimes we make good ones. Sometimes we make bad ones. Generally, they're getting better and better. Digital is now part of it, and we have this capability for augmented and mixed reality. <sighs> Armor. Um, so. Let's look at some current tools, right? No, actually, we're not. I'm not going to look at any current tools, because you guys already know about this. I write about it. We've all seen a lot of the things already out there. We know how HoloLens helps us collaborate, and, and how Meta and, and um, Magic Leap and, and Daiquiri are giving us natural interfaces. And even one of my favorites, um, Matayo, before they were bought by Apple, had thermal touch experiments going where we can interact with the real world through locally heating up. Um, areas and then scanning that. So we're not going to really look at that. Instead, I want to look at two trends, and I'll leave you with a prediction, and then I'm out of here. Um, what's around the corner? When I look at a category to try to find trends about it, it's often really helpful for me to look not exactly at the category, but at adjacent technologies going on. And one of the big things to consider about Armor is that is power, right? Because the way we use these, this technology a lot in the current, you know, in today, the way we use it is with wearable eyewear, and those things need power, right? So it's really interesting for me to look at what developments are happening with both batteries and power distribution. And I'm not talking about just like bigger batteries or um, you know, faster charging batteries, like the store dot thing. I don't know if you guys saw that lithium ion battery charge in like five minutes. Pretty cool, but I'm not looking, looking at that. I'm looking for a lot of more different scenarios, like when Princeton's working on piezo human generated power. You know, as you move your knee, you're generating power with this little chip in your body. Or Delft University doing radio frequency harvesting to, to capture energy and charge it. There's even a startup in my hometown of Columbus, Ohio, uh, Nikola Labs, that's done some really interesting things, not only with RF harvesting, harvesting energy to power the device, but also distributing that energy wirelessly to other devices inside of your environment, right? So that's really interesting to me when I think about how Armor tools will evolve, because what about thinking of the scenario where the environment you're in can, can be charging the device you're wearing that's letting you have this augmented and mixed reality experience. It's really interesting and can change some of the form factors and how things work. The next trend I keep an eye on is miniaturization, right? And you know, the guys from Ovidius were here yesterday, I think, and uh, I, this is a, a company I follow a lot, because they've created this, little, this tiny little chip, the Myriad 2, which um, you know, has 12 cores and can crunch local computer vision algorithms at like one watt of power. Pretty impressive. So when you mix things like a power, uh, low power, low energy um, cores that can do things with even smaller and smaller batteries, miniature batteries, um, like this, uh, like this Max, Hitachi Maxell um, 400 milliamp battery, then you get something that lets us go from wearables that look like this to this. Uh, no offense to Corey Manders and his research gear, um, but uh, things are getting smaller and smaller, and that's, that's important. But those are trends, right? Those are, not, those are not predictions. Those are just analyzing trends. And I do have a prediction, and it's kind of far out. And I think something that I'm totally looking at is biointegration. And as I think about 
all of the startups that I've seen and wh where they're headed, biohacking and biointegration of technology is something that I, I kind of believe in, right? And I'm not t talking just about starting points like lenses that we'll wear, like Verily's glucose monitoring lenses, you know, or Sony is, is, has some uh, patents out there where they're trying to enable a way to take pictures with contact lenses. I'm not talking about just like additional hardware. I'm starting to think about how our minds work and how we will begin to visualize, uh, have visualizations in the future. So why would we even need, in this future state, why would we even need uh, hardware to visualize? We have a lot of things going on in our mind already that we can see. And there is also a, already companies in Columbus, Ohio, again, my hometown, I'm giving them a big plug. Um, Vitell is working with human implants to allow people to regain quadriplegics to regain muscle movement with exoskeletons by circumventing and memorizing the activity in their brain to cause this, this reaction. And if we can do that, if we can memorize motor movement activity, can we memorize visualizations too? We might be able to, right? MIT has already found that by stimulating certain uh, cells in our brain, memories can come back to life for people that are uh, uh, experiencing that, that stimulation. So here's our own little experiment. I want you to think for a minute. Visualize, while we're on this magic leaf motif, Im imagine an elephant, right? Think of it in your mind, a big, giant, gray elephant. And you can see it like for a second, right? It, kinda, or it comes and goes, it's a flash, it's not persistent. But what if it were possible for us to have persistent visualizations in our mind of our own organic thoughts? Think about that for, for just a minute. Instead of, instead of us having media projected either into our eyes like Magic Leap or out onto to uh, transparent lenses in front of us like, like HoloLens or, or other wearables, what if the ideas that we have in our mind, we can let other people see, we can share with them, and you can, instead of seeing an elephant that someone makes in a digital media house and projects it for you, you can see how it was imagined by the imaginer. Pretty far out, right? Any, you guys buy that? Well, think about this, because how will this happen, right? How will we see each other's visualizations inside of our mind? Through like device-enabled telepathy or something, a, a machine-enabled telepathy? Yeah, that's how it will go down, right? Um, and it's already starting a little bit. There have been some experiments where, um, where one person in one country, thinking of two words, was able to transfer them over the internet to another person 5,000 miles away, who was able to understand cognitively what those words were. I think it was the word hello and the word ciao. Um, interesting. This is the very, 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 very beginning of that kind of thing, right? But when you think about trends and think about how, where things go from now, I'm not always looking at what is possible right now, but, but what are the little puzzle pieces that we can put together to kind of see where things are headed? This is something I think that we'll be able to, to to pull together. And there were, the, the world is not without precedent for this, right? The elephant nose fish creates these weak magnetic fields around its head, and it can use that to find food or even communicate with other elephant nose fish. Pretty far out. Questions arise. Do we need any of this technology? Do we need to operate this way? The same answer comes back to us, right? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It can't be stopped. It is an inevitability. We make tools. That's just what we do. And if this sounds way too far out, I want to just leave you with a few things some other people thought were like pretty far out to just take a second to consume a few of these. That's a good one. Right? And the Queen Mary, Mother of the Mall, the, the internet will be the CB radio of the 90s. So I thank you for taking a little bit of time to peer into what I'm thinking about the future uh, of mixed reality and augmented reality and how it will become something part of us, inside of us. And in that way, it doesn't really divide us from each other. It's something we can use together to, uh, to collaborate and be more human.
So thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm.